Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be learning a lesson written by K. S. Raman and the lesson is called as A Dream of Flight. Engrossed in Charles H. Gibbs Smith's book, The Invention of the Aeroplane, 1799 to 1909, I realized it was evening only when my friend came in. I had glimpsed this book amidst a heap of leather bound volumes in an old bookshop two days ago. The title had aroused my curiosity. I bought it and started reading as soon as I reached home. The book explained in great detail man's eternal longing and hope that led to innumerable trials, most of which ended as disasters and subsequent experimentation arising from various inventions used for flight before the advent of aeroplane as we know of it today. I found the book so absorbing that I even forgot my regular evening walk. My friend, who is an avid aviation enthusiast, glanced at the book and told me that he too would like to read it later. When he was sure that I would not budge out of my chair, my friend asked me to be up and ready at 6 o'clock sharp next morning and departed, reading almost non-stop. It was past midnight when I finally finished the book and put it down. So here the writer, that is K.S. Raman, he is engrossed in a book. Engrossed in the sense completely absorbed or in full interest. He is reading a book and it is called The Invention of the Aeroplane 1799 to 1909. And it is written by Charles H. Gibbs. Smith and he realized that it was only evening when his friend had come there to his home and he had glimpsed or he had seen this book in the leather volumes in an old bookshop two days ago and and he was very curious to read that so he bought it and he started reading as soon as he reached home. Now the book explains about the man's eternal longing and hope after a lot of innumerable trials which ended up in disasters or experimentation after a very long time the entire detail is written so all the experimentation done previously is given in that book and he found this book so absorbing that he actually forgot about his regular evening walk and his friend who is also an aviation enthusiast he is also in interested interested in aviation aviation the flying or operating of aircrafts so his friend also was interested he saw that book and he told him that after you finish reading this i want to read it later you have to give that book to me too and when he was sure his friend was very sure that this person is not gonna get up from his chair he's not gonna budge out of my chair that is move from that place because he's so into that book. So his friend tells him that you be ready at 6 o'clock morning. The next morning that is early morning 6 o'clock be ready. And then he left. And this person that is K.S. Raman. He sat there reading that book non-stop. And it was almost midnight. It was past midnight when he finally finished the book and he put it down. I switched off the light and dropped off exhausted on the bed with the events from the book so fresh in my memory. Gradually, as I drifted off to sleep, I could almost feel the tension and excitement when some incident started floating right in front of my eyes. Now the writer, he switched off the light and he dropped off. He was very tired and he fell on the bed. And all these events from the book that he read, it was all very fresh in his memory. And as he drifted off to sleep, he could almost feel the tension and excitement that is whatever he read was flashing the entire book whatever he read each and every incident started playing in his memory 1496 AD from atop a soaring tower stands a man with bat like wings made from wood and cloth covered with birds feathers the air rings with encouraging shouts from a big crowd gathered far down and ruffles the feathers on his cloth. The bird man flexes his shoulders 
and beating his arms fast, suddenly jumps out. But what in heaven's name is happening? Instead of flying free in the sky like a bird, the man is tumbling down inverted and totally out of control. As the crowd scatters hastily, he falls in they are missed in a tangled heap of cloth and feathers and the shrill wails of women pierce the sky. Another adventurer who wanted to fly like a bird had lost his life. Now the first incident was in the year 1496 AD. So here what happens was a man was standing at the top of the tower with bat like wings which was made from wood and cloth and it was covered with birds feathers there was a huge crowd and they all were screaming and they were so excited to know what is going to happen now this man he was literally named as the bird man he started flexing his shoulders and he started beating his arms fast so that he could fly and he suddenly jumps out from that tower but what happens now instead of flying free like a bird this man starts tumbling down that is he starts falling and he's totally out of control and as the crowd scatters hastily the crowd which was gathered there they all started moving here and there quickly and this man he falls in their midst that is right in middle of the crowd he falls down in a tangled heap of cloth and feathers and he loses his life and all the crowd the people they started screaming in shock because he lost his life right in front of them 1783 AD in the town of Annonay in France hundreds of people are gathered in the market square flames leap high from a huge pile of burning wood in the middle of the square held by thick ropes all around on top of the fire is a mammoth globular fabric envelope with its bottom open and decorated with colorful motifs as the spear fills with hot air and heaves from side to side four persons cut off the ropes the crowd watches open mouth as the spherical balloon starts flying upwards and drifts across the sky. A sheep, a hen and a duck placed in the basket of the balloon became the first air passengers. Now the next incident was in the year 1783 AD. Now this happened in the town of Annone in France and hundreds of people had gathered there in a place called Market Square and there was fire or flame from a huge pile of burning wood in the middle of that square held by thick ropes all around on top of the fire is a mammoth globular fabric envelope with its bottom open it's almost like the balloon that we see hot air balloon that we see in the present world it was similar to that so there was a fire in between that square uh, the entire fabric it was completely decorated with some colorful motifs motifs is nothing but a design or a figure or a pattern now as this sphere fills with hot air it started heaving from side to side that is moving from side to side and four persons in the four corners they cut the ropes and the crowd watches open mouth they were really shocked or in an awe that the spherical balloon starts flying upwards and drifts or it moves across the sky inside that basket of the balloon a sheep a hen and a duck were placed so they became the first air passengers 1853 AD a boat shaped contraption with wheels at the bottom having a big wing shaped like the hood of a snake stands atop a small hill four triangular surfaces in the form of a cross are at the back supported by a wooden frame sir george cayley puts his carriage chauffeur inside and gives a big push the vehicle starts rolling on its wheels and rushes towards the valley below but as it gathers speed this weird craft leaves the ground 
floating in the air, it touches down on the other side of the valley. Man has at last devised a contraption with which he could launch himself from a hill and glide down to the ground. Now comes the year 1853 AD, a boat shaped contraption with wheels at the bottom. It had a big wing shaped like a, a hood of a snake. It was standing in top of a hill and four triangular surfaces in the form of a cross are at the back supported by a wooden frame. So this was an experimentation done by Sir George Cayley and he puts his carriage chauffeur inside. Chauffeur is nothing but a person employed to drive a private or a hired vehicle in the sense a driver and he gives a big push to that. Now the vehicle starts rolling because of the wheels it had and rushes towards the valley below. It was at the top of the mountain and starts coming down. But as it gathers speed, this craft, it leaves the ground because of the speed, momentum. Now floating in the air, it touches down on the other side of the valley and man finally has devised a contraption or how to launch himself from a hill and glide down to the ground. 1891 AD, Otto Lilienthal lifts a strange craft built from wood and fabric and brings it out of a shed built atop a big hill comprising two six meter long bat like wings on top of one another with a horizontal and a vertical surface behind this craft has a ring shaped frame between the wings Lenienthal steps inside the frame and with his arms supporting the ring runs forward within a few steps Lenienthal's craft starts floating in the air. Hanging beneath, Lenienthal glides for a long distance and touches down at the bottom of the hill. Next is 1891 AD. So here, Otto Lenienthal, he lifts a strange craft built from wood and fabric that is cloth and he brings this at the top of a big hill and it was comprising of two six meter long bat like wings on top of one another with a horizontal and vertical surface behind so this craft or this aircraft had a ring shaped frame between the wings so Lenienthal he steps inside the frame and with his arms supporting the ring runs forward and within a few steps the aircraft that was built by Lenienthal, he having him inside, starts floating in the air. And hanging beneath, Lenienthal glides for a longer distance and touches down at the bottom of the hill. 1903 Huge mounds of sand abound all round in Kitty Hawk dunes in North Carolina. A two-winged machine stands on a long wooden rafter. Orville Wright lies prone in the middle over the bottom wing a small internal combustion engine by his side turns a pair of two bladed paddle wheels through long bicycle chains as the engine growls wilbur wright frees the rope holding the machine and it surges forward moving about 12 meters per second the machine suddenly lifts up and behold it is flying in the air the next is 1903. So here we talk about the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright brothers. So here what happens was this happened in the year, um, in the place called North Carolina in Kitty Hawk Dunes. Orville Wright, one of the Wright brothers, he lies prone in the middle over the bottom wing and a small internal combustion engine by his side turns a pair of two bladed paddle wheels through long bicycle chains. So as this machine or this engine growls or it starts, Wilbur Wright, the other brother, he frees the rope holding the machine and it moves forward. And moving about 12 meters per second, this machine suddenly lifts up and it is flying in the air. It was one of the best experiment at that time because right now the airplane that we are seeing is somewhat similar to that but more advanced. The piercing sound of the alarm clock 
puts a full stop to my dreams of flight and brings me back to reality. My friend, who arrived on the dot at 6 in the morning, takes me straight to a small airfield outside the city. As K.S. Raman was dreaming all this, and all his memories were flashing, the sound of the alarm clock starts ringing and he wakes up and it brings back to reality. He understood that everything that he was dreaming was just a memory or a dream. As his friend had told that 6 o'clock be ready, he had come right on time and they both went to a small airfield outside the city. I hope you have understood the lesson. In case you have any doubts, you can comment below and do subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you and have a nice day.